I've lived in Chicago for over two years, decided not to make it my long-term home. In my last video, I talked about all the things I love about Chicago, from the walkability, the architecture, and the endless entertainment. However, everywhere has pros and cons, and Chicago is no exception. Today I'll be showing you the top reasons why you might want to think twice before moving there. Number one, crime. Chicago has some of the highest crime rates in the United States. Last weekend alone, which included Father's Day, saw a staggering 60 shootings, 10 of which were fatal. In 2022, there were 695 homicides. Just stop and let that sink in for a minute. 695 people. To put this in perspective, Canada had 788 homicides in the entire country in 2021. It is so bad that Chicago police have installed pods or police observation devices. These state-of-the-art surveillance cameras, equipped with bulletproof technology, night vision capabilities, and gunshot detection systems, are strategically placed throughout the city. Some are equipped with flashing blue lights on top. Although they have been shown to reduce crime, concerns have been raised that they are a threat to personal privacy. Beyond the distress in gun violence, Chicago has also witnessed a surge in vehicle thefts. ABC News reported that more than 20,000 cars were stolen between May 2022 and May 2023, and many of these cars ended up in Poland. In addition to the many illegal firearms circulating, the emergence of ghost guns has compounded the city's challenges with gun violence. These untraceable firearms are either manufactured using 3D printers or purchased as incomplete kits that can be easily assembled. Their untraceable nature makes it difficult for authorities to track their origin and link them back to their owners. The University of Chicago Crime Lab found that gun violence is a big reason for disparities in life expectancy between the south and west side of Chicago compared to the wealthier north side. Shockingly, 87% of the city's homicide victims are male, with three quarters of them being black. Number two, corruption. Chicago is America's most corrupt metropolitan area for the third year in a row, according to a 2022 report from the University of Illinois at Chicago. And Illinois is the third most corrupt state. And we thought Detroit had problems. Astonishingly, four out of the 10 former governors of Illinois have served time in federal prison. Another two governors were prosecuted but acquitted at trial. One notable case from the 1980s sheds light on the pervasive corruption in Chicago. Called Operation Greylord, it led to conspiracy and bribery charges against court personnel and a staggering 103 judges. Eventually, 90 of the defendants were convicted. The culture of corruption and pay-to-play politics continue to thrive in Chicago. In May 2023, Four former ComEd employees, known as the ComEd Four, were found guilty of bribery, conspiracy, and falsifying documents. The investigation revealed that four executives orchestrated a bribery scheme involving former Illinois House Speaker Michael Madigan. The economic consequences of these cases are staggering, costing the state an estimated $566 million per year. Even the current Governor Pritzker was involved in a scandal. He had a contractor remove all the toilets at one of his mansions so that it could be classified as uninhabitable, saving him over $300,000 in property taxes. Which brings us to con three, taxes. According to Zillow, the median home price in Chicago is $286,000 in May of 2023, which is well below the U.S. home value of $346,000. It is also far lower than other big U.S. cities. However, you will pay a lot more in property taxes. For example, according to the Cook County Property Tax Calculator, tax on a home in Logan Square with an assessed value of $500,000 would be $10,950 a year. Though we found most homes were assessed far below the value they were selling at, property taxes are still more than double the rate of the national average. Also, their sales tax rate is 10.25%, one of the highest in the country. If that isn't enough, the state is increasing the gas taxes in July. And then of course there's income tax. Illinois has a flat income tax rate of 4.95%. That is average compared to many other states. However, if you have a low income, you do better in a state with graduated rates. Number four, segregation and poverty. 
According to the latest U.S. Census data, 17% of people in Chicago live in poverty, well above the national average of just over 11%. Unfortunately, Chicago also ranks among the worst cities in America for racial segregation, according to Brown University. There are distinct racial and socioeconomic divides with African American and Hispanic communities, primarily residing on the city's south and west sides of Chicago. These segregated neighborhoods have higher rates of poverty, poorer school outcomes, and limited access to quality health care. The lack of investment and in resources in marginalized communities perpetuates a cycle of poverty that is difficult to break. It is hard to comprehend how there can be so much poverty in a state where the governor is a multi-billionaire. Number five, schools. The quality of schools in Chicago varies drastically. Competition to secure a spot in reputable schools begins as early as preschool with eager parents attending seminars about how to navigate the challenging admissions processes for both preschools and elementary schools. I can understand why they do this. According to the nation's report card, in 2022, only 16% of grade 8 Chicago students are proficient in math and only 21% in reading. Those scores are some of the worst in the nation. For families residing outside of neighborhoods with excellent high schools, the process of competing to get into a high school in another zone can be more competitive than gaining admission to a good college. Students apply through the GoCPS system. Students can improve their chances by having better grades and standardized test scores. Consequently, many parents invest in test preparation classes and even hire experts to navigate their way to the best high schools. Yes, I said high school, not college. In addition, some schools require auditions, portfolios, or interviews. However, if you do manage to get in, Chicago does have some remarkable high schools with specialized programs to cater to various interests. From sports programs to specialized tracks in law, health sciences, business, architecture, nursing, carpentry, and more. They even have 11 selective enrollment public high schools, where a majority of graduates go on to attend elite colleges. Without a parental support or an advocate, it can be extremely challenging to get a quality education. If you move to Chicago and want great schools for your kids, prepare early and be ready for fierce competition. Number six, parking. Parking in Chicago was an absolute nightmare. There were some places we tried to visit, like Wrigley Field, but we just couldn't find a place to park, so we gave up. The demand for parking outweighs the supply. In many neighborhoods, the only place to park your car is on the street. Drivers spend hours circling around in search of elusive parking spots. You need a permit to park in many of the residential areas, but still we saw almost no openings. I can only imagine how much worse it must be in the winter. Also, there are so many rules and different signs around parking. I bet they hand out a lot of parking tickets. Take for example this location. You can park here except for some overnight hours or if the snow is less than two inches. Just seeing the sign stressed me out. If we lived here, we would reconsider even owning a car and would live near the L train. We would definitely choose a neighborhood with a high walking and biking score. Number seven, driving. On top of the trouble parking a car, driving a car here is also a nightmare. According to Inrix, Chicago drivers spend on average 155 hours stuck in traffic, the second highest in the world. The only place worse was London, England. That's a week of your life every year stuck behind the wheel stressfully inching along in traffic. Now you could drive on toll roads to try to save time, but that will add up. For example, if you drive the Chicago Skyway toll road, it will cost $6.60 each way. And then you need to add on parking costs. To park at the Millennium Garage near the Cloudgate Sculpture downtown costs $235 a month. And then there are the potholes. As of March 14, 2023, there were over 17,000 potholes reported to the city. And don't forget about all the fun of driving in the winter. Have you ever tried driving in whiteout conditions? I don't recommend it. Which brings me to number eight, winter. Chicago is notorious for its long and brutal winters. If like us, you're not a fan of freezing temperatures, icy roads and piles of snow, then Chicago's winter might not be for you. In fact, the temperature dips below freezing on over 100 days a year. Now, it isn't as cold as Ottawa or many other places in Canada, but as one viewer said, you'll freeze your eyes shut in winter waiting for the elk. And if you thought parking was hard in the summer, 
Wait until you see what it's like when the roads are covered in snow. Though we really enjoyed our trip to Chicago and loved all the things to do, plus the great neighborhoods and architecture, we won't be moving to Chicago anytime soon and are going to continue to check out other places. So be sure to subscribe and click the bell to follow along as we continue to search for the best place to live. You won't want to miss my next video. In the meantime, be sure to check out more cities here. Thank you.